、いい正解。Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 82, Buying and Selling. A little young lady that looked quite good and b e a r the Shen surname, most likely is a member of the Shen family. Ji Yu Shu scratched his head, it is just that she is very fierce and turned a blind eye at my magnificence. The voice just landed and a strange silence fell into the tea room. After a moment, Jiao Yang then smiled as he looked at Zi Jing Xing. I roughly know who she is. That young lady of the Shen family is somewhat powerful. Even though the smile was warm, the tone revealed a sharp comment. In fact, I also find it strange. Ji Yu Shu shuddered before scratching his head. When she came over, I observed carefully and it seemed that it was not her first time doing business with Bei Zhao Sheng. I asked Hong Ling and she had not seen her before. Our line of business has always been secretive and other than a few families in Ding Capital that know, there are no others. How did she know? This young lady is not simple at all. Jiao Yang thought before speaking, I initially thought that the Shen family of Ding Capital were all brainless meat. And sooner or later will be swallowed by others. Now it seems that the water is deeper than one had expected. He glanced at Zi Jingxing and found the latter deep in thought, so he asked, What do you think about this? Zi Jingxing raised his head and looked towards Ji Yu Shu. Did you agree to her conditions? Such a big matter like this h a v e to be discussed with you all. Ji Yu Shu bit into another pastry. But I reckon that the Shen family business is big and the military power in their hands is not weak at all. If what that Shen family young lady said is true, in the future when Third Z older brother p l a n things, it would be much easier. She, after all, does not fathom that our Fing's Yan pawn shop is actually Third older brother's secret business. When a sandpiper and a clam are locked in a fight, This was only to the advantage of the fisherman. That Shen little young lady most likely did not know that her promised commitment would only be to the advantage of Zi Jing Xing, but this could not be blamed on her as the powerful relationship between them was not even known to Hong Ling, even though she had managed the business for so many years. Even so, Jiao Yang pondered, this stakes is just too big on the news she wants to create. The imperial family would easily catch the attention if one is not careful. We are very discreet with our actions, and if there were to be any mistakes, there will be no losses. As for one Shen family more or less, there is no influence of them in the initial plan, so this is not that tempting. What you said also makes sense. Ji Yu Shu nodded his head and looked towards Zi Jing Xing, but at the end, It is still third older brother that makes the decision. You should agree to her condition. When Zi Jing Xing said those words, Jiao Yang frowned. Why the hasty decision? Since the Shen family has become a variable, it does not mean that there is no role for them in the future. To use them to deal with some people, it is worth a battle. As for her wanting to create news, it is targeted at Prince Yu residents. Zi Jing Xing raised his brows, just nice. We do not need to take action, and there will be things that we can do without. When he said so, the others then remembered. Ji Yu Shu smacked his palms. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. She w a n t to create news about Prince Yu residents plotting a rebellion. This was to target the residents of Prince Yu. What grudge does the Prince Yu residents have with the Shen family? Ji Yu Shu just returned back to Ding Capital and usually did not pay attention to the affairs of the court's daughters. So there were things that he was unclear and was unable to make heads or tails at all. It became evident in Jiao Yang's mind, he knew about the resentment between Shen Miao and Prince Yu and could not help but be surprised. If it was an ordinary female that came upon such a thing, one would be afraid of Prince Yu residence's power. But not only was Shen Miao not afraid, She was waiting for an opportunity to attack. She was extremely clever to know that the imperial family was backing the Prince Yu residents, and first worked on driving a wedge between them. If the imperial family had doubts about Prince Yu, naturally the life saving charm behind the Prince Yu residents was of no use. But even so, what could she still do? Except this business. Zi Jing Xing said. Inform the Chen family of Zhang Nan as soon as possible. Do not worry. I have already let Hong Ling send a letter to Yu province. But the Chen family's case has been dragged on for three years, 
I do not know if that Chen family little young lady's news is really true. After all in the beginning the Chen family had thought up of hundreds and thousands of methods but there were no news at all. So how could this be known by a little young lady? If her news is fake, most probably the Chen family would not let her live well. Ji Yushu's mouth was stuffed with snacks and could not speak clearly. Since she come here selling the news, it is real. Zi Jingxing frowned. It is just that there are some parts that make no sense. Are you a rice bucket? Zhao Yang looked at Ji Yushu's look of wolfing down the food and could not help but shook his head. Could it be that you, a manager of the Feng's Yan Pawn Shop, have never eat before? Ji Yushu put a finger out and waved it. How would there be other places snacks be as good as the ones made by third older brother's chef? The last time I brought the snacks made by third older brother's chef to young lady Xiao Yao and she actually smiled at me. It can be seen that, he lifted one snack to Zhao Yang's face, there are some differences to it. Zhao Yang was too lazy to scold him when he saw Ji Yushu suddenly had a concentrated look and like he had thought about something before taking out a piece of bank note from his pocket, speaking of which, that Shen family young lady gave me a thousand tails at the end to buy an information. What information? Zi Jingxing and Zhao Yang looked at him the same time, to look for someone, a young lady by the name of Liu Ying and said that, most probably she is a young lady from a brothel and is located in the Ding capital. And it was essential for me to find her. He asked curiously. Why does she want to find a brothel lady? Could it be that she, like me, loves beauties? Zhao Yang and Zi Jingxing looked at one another. The former was puzzled and the latter just shook his head lightly. When Hong Ling ushered her out, Mo Qing and the rest gave a sigh of relief after seeing her safe and sound. Shen Miao had stayed inside for far too long and if she stayed for a moment more, the few of them would have rushed in to get her out before leaving. Shen Kaiyu had warned repeatedly that Shen Miao had provoked trouble so one must be careful during the journey. If they lost Shen Miao, Shen Kaiyu would kill the few of them. Hong Ling politely smiled at Shen Miao. May Shen young lady come here again in 10 days time, thanking Supervisor Hong. Shen Miao replied softly. It was the little shop assistant by the door that could not help but glance at Shen Miao a few more times. Most likely because it was the first time seeing Hong Ling treating someone that respectfully. After Shen Miao and entourage went up the carriage and left, the little shop assistant could not help but ask Hong Ling, Supervisor, what kind of backing does that young lady have? Go and do your things well. Hong Ling patted his head. After some thoughts, she said more. The next time when you see this Shen young lady, sweeten your mouth. She is not a simple character. The little shop assistant quickly complied. Hong Ling watched the horse carriage getting further away as her heart sighed in relief. Highly talented individuals truly came forth in large numbers in the Ding capital that now even a little young lady was able to scheme major events quietly. As compared to her family master, she was not inferior in any respect. In the horse carriage, Shen Miao was still lost in thought and one did not know what she was thinking about, and Gings and Gu Yu dare not disturb her train of thought and thus kept quiet. Actually they also did not know what kind of business Shen Miao came over to do. It was obviously a pawn shop but they did not know what was actually pawned. Since Shen Miao did not talk about it, the two maids would also not shoot their mouths off. But after passing by a place, Gu Yu said with a smile, it is Guang Fu's eye in front. Since it had been a long time since one came out, why not let this servant buy some snacks from there? Guang Fu's eye's snacks had always been sought after and at the moment it was not the time when it was the most crowded so there was no harm in buying some. Even though Shen Miao herself did not really like to eat them, Luo Zhu Yan and Shen Kaiyu do. Shen Miao nodded her head. Go then. Gu Yu jumped off the carriage and headed to Guang Fu's eye herself. Mo Qing and the few of them surrounded the horse carriage and because they were all tall and hefty, they were somewhat eye-catching so those people who passed them would give them a second glance. Shen Miao opened up the curtains for ventilation but her vision was attracted by another person. That person most likely also came out from Guang Fu's eye and was carrying a bag of snacks. When the person's eyes just nicely met Shen Miao's, 
one could not help but be slightly stunned. It was Pei Lang. Shen Miao had not been to Guangwenteng for a long time, since she did not want a reputation of a talented female nor getting scholarly honor. In these days, she was busy with her things and forgot that there would be such an encounter. She looked at Pei Lang and suddenly smiled as she nodded her head in the horse carriage. Pei Lang was stunned for a moment. In fact, Shen Miao was his student. Ming Chi looked upon the respect one had for teachers, not counting Zi Jing Xing. All the students would treat him respectfully. But Shen Miao's na gave Pei Lang a wrong impression as it seemed that he was looking up to Shen Miao and she was even higher than he was. Before he had time to respond, Shen Miao had already put the curtains down. Mo King and the few of them who noticed his line of sight, were looking at him vigilantly. Pei Lang stood rooted in place. This kind of rude action would made him, who was arrogant to the bones, angry. But he did not know for what reason other than feeling of not knowing whether to laugh or cry, there was no other feelings that came out of it. Most likely it was because of Shen Miao's strong performance lately that made him felt that if Shen Miao was like the rest of those students and acted obediently, he would not be used to it. Pei Lang shook his head and could only walk away. Feeling that the gaze from outside the horse carriage looked away, Shen Miao's eyes hang down as she looked down to her cuffs. Towards Pei Lang, she had complicated feelings as she hated his nonchalance on the matter of Fu Ziyu Yi's treatment of Wan Yun and Fu Ming but also knew that Pei Lang was only doing what he thought was loyalty to the monarch. The resentments in the previous life was over and even though there was still uses for Pei Lang in this lifetime, she should not be tangled up in the matter. It was just that there was some uncomfortableness in her heart. As she was thinking, Gu Yu had returned after buying the snacks. Upon returning to the Shen residence, the skies were not considered dark and since Shen Kaiyu also lived in the western courtyard, Shen Miao planned to send the snacks to Shen Kaiyu. Just as she walked to the main hall, she coincidentally meet Ren Wan Yun supporting Shen King as they walked out. Ren Wan Yun looked at Shen Miao as if there were knives in her eyes and Shen King looked extremely maliciously at her that even Gu Yu and Gings could not help but shudder as they went up to protect Shen Miao. Fifth daughter did not go to Old Furin for greetings these days. Ren Wan Yun brought the matter up, could it be that one intended to be an unfilial grandchild? Shen Miao swept a glance at her. Ren Wan Yun was now like a mad dog, biting whoever it sees. On one hand she feared Shen Xin and Lu Wo Zhu Yan and on the other hand she has not resigned to Shen King's misfortune. Thus she could only do some superficial little actions. But Shen Miao was not scared after all. She was not afraid of that reputation at all and smiled gently at Shen King. Second Shen now still have the energy to manage my matters and not afraid that eldest sister would feel hurt. The Empress's bestowment is quick and one have to enter the prince residence next month. Second Shen have to also teach eldest sister some matters after all the family is not an ordinary one but a prince of first rank. Finishing, she walked away with Jing's and Gu Yu without even turning back. Ren Wan Yun was so angry that her body started shaking. These days the more she was angry. The more she felt her mind was in chaos, that she did not have time to deal with those yin yangs that Shen Gui doted even more lately. Shen Dongling, born by Wan Yiliang, who had the image of delicate, without backing and always behind a closed door, started to cook for Shen Gui from time to time. With Shen King as an example, she was even more obedient. And that Wan Yin Yang coaxed Shen Gui very well, and it was Ren Wan Yun and Shen King whose days were unlike before. All of this was due to Shen Miao. Otherwise with Ren Wan Yun's means, how would that lowly Wan Yi Niang, who was managed by her since the beginning, be able to become so arrogant now? Mother. Shen King, who was beside her, pulled her hand. These days she had suffered all kinds of indifference treatment that her previous arrogant temper had reduced quite a lot. But the maliciousness and hatred in her eyes did not lessen as she said with clenched teeth, Do not worry, tolerate a little. Wait till I enter the Prince of First Rank Residence, even if one had to stake this life, I will make Prince Yu take action on Shen Miao. I will definitely not let her lie well, because Shen King was already pregnant, 
The Empress bestowed the marriage to be held next month so that the matter would be easier to handle early. In such a short time and moreover because it was an imperial decreed, Ren Wan Yun had no way out of it and could only watch as Shen King jumped into the fire pit. King Er must not be afraid. Ren Wan Yun said, Your older brother will return soon and Yuan Er is the most intelligent. When he return, he will definitely think of ways to ruin that little slut. Shen Yuan would also rush back to attend Shen King's wedding and Ren Wan Yun's eyes flashed. Now she was isolated and helpless, if it was not because of Shen Yuan Bo listening to old Furan's words to please her, one would be afraid that even that old woman would not help her. When Shen Miao returned to the west courtyard, she was surprised to see Shen Kaiyu was waiting for her in there. Seeing her return, Shen Kaiyu then released a sigh of relief and gave one round of checks before saying, Why go for so long? One would think that something had happened. At the feet of the emperor and in the bright daylight, whoever takes action mean that they are fools. Shen Miao passed to him the snacks, bought it on the way back, for you. Shen Kaiyu was surprised for a moment and was somewhat touched as he took it. This time coming back. Shen Miao's attitude to him changed and it made him particularly happy. Why is father and mother not in? Shen Miao asked. Just return to the capital and need to socially interact with colleagues. Shen Kaiyu looked around and said, Younger sister was not in today. These few days father has been in conflict with second and third Shu and just now old Furan severely scolded father. Father is in conflict with second and third Shu. Shen Kaiyu saw the look on Shen Miao's face and said after some thoughts, Younger sister, you also know that because of the matter of the ancestral hall, Father and mother are somewhat dissatisfied with second and third Shu. Naturally they did pay attention to them. Most likely old Furin was anxious and thus reprimanded father. Speaking till here, Shen Kaiyu could not help to show an expression of unfairness. Old Furin's heart is just too biased. What wrong do father have? Second and third Shu did not take good care of you in the residence and even I am angry about it, let alone what father feel. Shen Kaiyu did not use grandmother but old Furin apparently also had some misgiving for old Shen Furen. After finishing that sentence, Shen Kaiyu could not help but look at Shen Miao's expression. Shen Miao was after all raised by old Shen Furen all these years and previously when he returned, he saw her being very respectful to old Shen Furen. Shen Kaiyu had said those words in impulse and was unable to predict if Shen Miao would dislike this. Close and distant relatives are different. What more the blood flows is after all not one's own. Shen Miao said indifferently, naturally there will be discrimination. Ha! Shen Kaiyu was happy to find himself an ally, exactly. Father showed to her filial respect because of grandfather's sake and he had done so much for all these years. To even scold father for being unfilial. It was not only because of second and third Shu that she scolded father. Shen Miao said, one fear that this was related to father not bringing out the money that his majesty had bestowed. Old Shen Furin was one who loved money as much as one's own life, and this time Shen Xin was so extremely angry that he retained the rewards for his own use. And moreover Shen Miao also did not propose to send the money over. As time went on, old Shen Furin naturally could not sit still and had to thicken her skin to come finding fault. This is really. Shen Kaiyu wanted to say some stuff but felt that it was not appropriate to say it in front of his younger sister so he repressed it. So what about it? It's father's stuff. He will give to whoever he wants. Correct. So let her carry on scolding. As long as it is passable on the surface and do not bother about her, she would not be able to come up with any tricks. But father's temperament is overly straight. Some things have to be patient on the surface. When the opportunity comes, naturally there will be an outlet to vent one's anger. Shen Kaiyu found that Shen Miao's words were somewhat strange but faintly understood something and smiled. One year of not seeing. Younger sister's temperament has gotten much stronger. Shen Miao did not express a comment and saw that Shen Kaiyu had already opened up the paper back and put a big piece of snack into his mouth and chewed it up. 
the Ding Capital snacks is just so good to eat. How could there be such a fine thing in the northwestern desert? Shin Miao quietly watched him eating and asked gently a moment after, How does eldest brother view loyalty? Loyalty? Shen Kaiyu spoke without even lifting his head, naturally as being devoted to the monarch, dedicate oneself to the service of the country, killing the external enemies, dominating the entire land and becoming the pillars of the nation. Finishing speaking, he asked Shen Miao, why does younger sister ask this? Nothing. Shen Miao shook her head and lightly said, eat up. Her eyes were at deep thought but there was a flash of sadness. The first snow came falling down and the Din capital was covered in the first night of snow. When the sun shone, the snow that froze the eaves started shining, making it a truly beautiful sight. There were naughty children on the streets which bent down to grab a handful of snow and rolled them to a snowball. They then threw it at one another and played. The closer it was to the end of the year, the more crowded the Din capital would be as if with the hard work for the entire year, at the end of it, it has become fruitful. Outside the Fengzhan pawn shop, there hung a row of red lanterns but they were not ordinary red lanterns. One did not know what kind of materials the lanterns were made of, as it seems to be mixed with gold yarn that was shining even in broad daylight. There were also shiny glass beads that were shining at the bottom of the lanterns. Each flash of light was sparkling like crystals. With this kind of display of wealth, there were guards stationed outside and that deterred the constant stream of people who wanted to steal the lanterns. The plainly dressed little shop assistant welcomed the guests with smiles. There were only a few people who came to the Feng's Yan pawn shop for business and the shop assistants all generally lazed around but today they were uncharacteristically energized, as if expecting guests to arrive. Behind the Feng's Yan pawn shop's long corridor, there laid another piece of heaven and earth. At the first level of the pavilion, in the tea room, the red-clad lady's smile was charming and seductive as she personally carried snacks over. She said in a smile as she delivered, the chef had made some snacks, may the guest give it a try. Finishing, she withdrew from the room. There sat three people in the tea room. One was wearing a lake green long robe and the smile was kind and warm. The two persons that he was facing were around twenties of age and had a seventh to eighth similar appearances. Obviously this was a pair of brothers. Both of them had large eyes and there were swords on their waists with airs of the pugilist world. At this moment, the older of this pair of brothers said, Manager G. Is the seller of news deceiving us brother? Why the tardiness of appearance? Ji Yushu smiled, Chen brother must not be anxious, that day I had already arranged with her to meet today but did not mention the time. Anyways it would be today and would not be too late, so one hope that both of you will pardon this. As he spoke, he was cursing the both of them in his heart. Where would here be a business that would be conducted when the day just broke? Others were still sleeping. If one was not taking into consideration Zhang Nan's Qian family's reputation, he would have let the shop assistant to throw them out. Dare not conceal. The eldest Chen young master, Chen Yushan, said, when we brothers came to know about the news. It originally took half a month to reach Ding Capital but due to the non-stop journey by horse, we had made four horses tired to death just to know of our two younger sisters' news. Manager G also know that for these three years in order to find our younger sisters, we had spent much of our energy but there was no information at all. Thus upon hearing such sprouts, naturally one's heart would be anxious. Hope that Manager G will not jest. This eldest Chen young master was good at talking, and most likely saw that Ji Yushu was somewhat unpleased with their early coming and half explaining and half apologizing. Ji Yushu felt a little comfortable and his smile became a little sincere. These years I also helped you to pay attention to the information and now with the signs of positive outcome, I also feel comforted. It is in fact nothing for us to be waiting here. The second Chen young master was much younger and he spoke with full of them, as long as the news is real, there are no problems with more waiting even for half a month. But if it is fake, to play with our Zhang Nan's Chen family like this, do not blame us brothers for being rude. Ji Yushu's warm heart suddenly felt annoyed. He did not care if the Chen brothers played with him but if they were to play punk in his territory, 
it made him extremely annoyed. His smile did not change but his tone of voice became much colder. My Feng's Yan Pawn Shop only care about the buying and selling of news and when this deal is successful, then there will be an exchange of money but if it is unsuccessful then it would be dispersing with a clap. What Chen brother want to do, I would not care. This Feng Xi'an Pawn Shop of mine is however a place purely for business and cannot afford any trouble. Chen Yushan paused and fiercely stared at his younger brother. He naturally knew the power of the seemingly friendly and harmless youth in front and that his current appearance now was not as simple as what he was showing. Chen Yuhai saw his eldest brother's look and knew that he had said the wrong thing and did not continue. The atmosphere became silent. After a long time there were footsteps at the door but it was Hong Ling that parted the beaded curtain with a smile and spoke to Ji Yu Shu, manager. The customer is here. The Chen brothers unconsciously looked at the door and a purple-clad young female walked out from behind Hong Ling. This young female looked delicate and adorable and seemed to be around 13 or 14 of age. But one did not know why her brows were as calm as water like she was much older than she appeared. Thus it made others feel somewhat confused. She opened up the curtains and sat down on the empty chair before nodding at Ji Yu Shu, manager Ji. This, young lady. Chen Yushan felt conflicted asking, is the one selling the news? Hong Ling retreated with a smile and there was only the Chen brothers, Shen Miao and Ji Yushu in the tea room. Shen Miao said, yes. Chen Yuhai's facial expression changed and sneered, young lady. How old were you three years ago? Do not come and play with the two of us. There are many channels to gain the news and perhaps it was not seen personally and perhaps it was not known three years ago. The buying and selling is about the results, also it is really not worth it playing with just a small Chen family. A poo sound was heard and Ji Yushu could not help but laughing out. But when he laughed, he saw Chen Yu Hai's face turned ugly and he quickly made his face serious. What Shen young lady said was not wrong. The buying and selling is about the results and the process is not as important. Is that so? Chen Yuhai looked at Shen Miao and said in a not warm or cold tone, then one do not know how can this Shen young lady guarantee that the information is true? It is especially particular in business that the results are not false, so if the results are indeed real, us brothers would definitely provide a heavy amount of gold for thanks. But if it is not real, do you know the consequences? When speaking the last part, Chen Yuhai's tone became sinister. Those who wandered in the pugilist world had a little viciousness and in that moment the fierceness burst out and it was enough to intimidate normal people, must less a little young lady. But one only met with silence as Shen Miao was looking at him without blinking. There was not even a trace of a change of emotions. Her calmness seemed to make Shen Yuhai felt like one who stirred up trouble deliberately. Ji Yushu wanted to laugh but could not laugh so he could only hold it in. The silent Chen Yushan finally spoke, Shen young lady. My younger brother is somewhat rude and I apologize for him. The two of us are sincere in buying the news and if young lady's news is true, we will definitely offer tens of thousands of gold as thanks. There is no need for tens of thousands of gold. Shin Miao said, just give some as you prefer. It is just that Zhang Nan's Chen family's connections are widespread and I only wanted to receive good karma. One would be unable to say for certain that in the future if there is anything that requires Chen family's help, hope that both would take this into consideration to the news provided and take care accordingly. The two persons she was facing were males that were much older and had also experienced much more. But there was no conceding in terms of her words and everything was done properly, as if there was some heroism of the pugilist world. This made Chen Yushan view her higher and cupped his hands in agreement. But he did not know that Ji Yushu was long cursing Shen Miao as an unscrupulous merchant in his heart. One knew that the money earned from the sold news would all be given to Feng's Yan Pawn Shop, but now Shen Miao took the initiative to tell them to give lesser money. Was not this making Feng's Yan Pawn Shop earning less? You better speak about that news. Chen Yuhai was after all somewhat anxious. Shin Miao glanced at him and said, 
the sisters of the Chin family disappeared at Zhongnanzhu province but were in fact abducted by others. The mastermind of the abduction of the sisters is currently the brother of His Majesty, Prince Yu of the first rank. When the words were spoken, the three persons in the tea room became silent. In the secret room next to the tea room, two people were also stunned. The white-clad gentleman's voice even broke. Prince Yu of the first rank, the purple-clad youth was gently stroking the jade cup when his lips suddenly raised to a smile as he said, Interesting. 